Uh, tonight, there will be uh, this, this evening, there will be uh, no public comments. Uh, call the meeting to order. Here comes EBA. July 8th, 2021. But it will be call for I call for order. Roll call. All right, Rob Decker. Present. Alexander. Here. David is absent. Here. I am here. Adam. Yes, good evening. And John Zabersky. Absent. So that means that we're going to have uh, both. And we put them as alternates, but they're auxiliaries. Is that how we're the general auxiliaries? Auxiliaries, correct? I thought alternate is the legalese, but okay. I don't know how they write them on your sheet, right? Alternates, alternates so, on the website. Okay. Is it alternate or? Yeah, it says alternate okay, on the so website, so I'm assuming. Jennifer and um, Alex will be voting tonight. Okay, first thing, we've got roll call uh, review of minutes. Has everyone had a chance to look the minutes over? I have. I have also. Yes. Okay, okay. so we're going to vote to accept. We're going to accept minutes. Would you like a motion, Mr. Chair? Yes, thank you. Yep. Motion? Uh, I, Adam Sokolowski, will make a motion to accept the me meeting minutes <clears throat> um, from May 2021. I second. second. Okay. So let's, uh, any discussion on the minutes? I'm going to abstain because I haven't read them. Other comments. Okay, uh, I move that we take a vote on accepting minutes. Uh, I, Adam Sekolowski, yes, for the accepting of the minutes. Okay. Jennifer? I accept the minutes. Alex? Yes. I accept the minutes. Okay, next on um, review of mail. Uh, we all have the outline suggestion we all have that we'll yes but everyone has it i'm just going to write it down if we have it yeah they all everyone's got their copy yes 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 Robert? yes okay Jim, they gave me a copy yep. okay next thing yeah. again there is reorganization um i made the motion with uh, adam sekolaski to become the new chair for the uh, deerfield CBA going board of appeals. We have a second. Second. Okay. Discussion. I will do the best I can. Okay. Mr. Moderator, move nominations to be closed. You move what to be closed? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Move nominations to be closed. Okay. Uh, any other comments by board members? Jen? Um, my only comment is with the um, you know, both David and, and Adam were reappointed. I know there were some questions about best practices brought up at the select board meeting, um, but I, until they're applicable, um, I'm going to abstain from voting today. Okay. Alex? Uh, yes. Can you just talk into the mic? Yeah. Okay. Alex? Um, yeah, Adam, I'm glad that you're uh, interested in uh, having on the court. So it's, it's willing. <laughs> uh, thank you. You do realize it's a thankless job. I am fully aware. Okay. Okay. Um, so you, I guess we'll, uh, we should have a, a second on uh, Mr. Decker's motion. Okay. I will, I will second it. Nominations. Nominations. Okay, so now we uh, we kind of close discussion. Oh, uh, we can I, vote. I, my move to close the discussion. A second. It's already been. Motion. Yeah, but you said you're closing uh, nominations. Nominations. Yeah. Okay, so um, well, we got. We want to we vote, vote for that. Close. Close. Yeah, through. I think we need to. Okay. Then we cover all bases. Okay. Do I have a second? Yes. Second. Okay. Bob Decker, second. Second. Okay. 
vote on that? So what we we're be... voting on is we're voting on Adam Zipolowski to become the new chair of Fairfield. What we're voting is is to not take any more nominations for the chairman. Okay, right. and then then the next vote will be. Uh, okay, I, I missed that. I thought we accepted your. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, so... it gets hairy, but to do it best way is okay. to vote to close the nominations, and then uh, vote to elect Mr. Sukolaski okay. as the chairman. So you made a motion to close nominations. Yep. I second it. Do we I think we need to vote on that one? Let's vote yes, on that. Sure. Yes. 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 No. Yes. Yes. Okay. It carries that we're going to close nominations. Okay, vote. So that was four to four yeses. All right. I guess we go to motion to elect Mr. Sokolowski as our new chairperson. I make a motion that we uh, take a vote on that. Do I have a second? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So I guess we, I don't think we need to take a vote on that. Yeah, you go yeah. take a vote on that one. On that. All right, vote to accept Mr. Sokolowski as our new chair. Is that what we're going to do it? All right. Yeah. All right. Holding my feet to the fire. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Decker. Yes. Alex? Yes. Jennifer? No. Uh, I vote yes. And then, uh, it doesn't make a difference. I can vote for myself, or I can't, or I can abstain. You want to, I'll abstain. Okay, so that means that no, I'll vote for myself. Report it as vote me voting for myself. So you get to do that, right? Yeah. Vote for myself before in a ballot so box. It's four yeses. And one no. So the motion carries, and Adam Sapolowski becomes a new chair. I step down. So, Mr. Sapolowski, you get to carry the paperwork. All right. Congratulations. Oh. You do realize it's a lot of work, and it's a thankless job. I do. But at the end of the day, I just want to do the best thing for the town. Oh, I agree with you. You know, but I only do, do this because. My father did it for so many years. Ronnie Bohanowitz did it. And you might not have always agreed with them, but no one steps up and volunteers. Then I can, I can tell you one thing. Over the course of time in various boards, we get into debates yeah. on different issues. And we usually part friends by the end of the night. And everybody respects what everybody's opinion is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some there's some good, there's some something you get upset about, but most of the time it's, it's say. I did a whole college class on dissenting opinions. We had to do the, the whole class was reading the Supreme Judicial Court's dissenting opinions from like 1970 to 2020 or two, well, no, 2000, because I've been out of college for a little while. But well, now you gotta go to law school. No. <laughs> I don't think so. I think if I did another one, I'd do my MBA. All right, so. I have that. It's still a good one to get. Yeah. I, I, my master's in. Might as well go for a PhD if you want to go. Yeah. Go to law uh, let's see here. So. Um, number six. Yes, number six. Thanks. So, um, did you, Jen, or Alex want to talk about this? Um, I thought it looked great. I. Thanks for, I had an opportunity to look it over a little bit before I went to the gym, uh, but I'm happy to hear um, sure. um, so any Alex, discussion if you. Alex, okay. do you mind? No. Um, so Alex and I met um, probably twice. We uploaded some stuff 
um, and worked on documents together. We evaluated communities um, in Eastern Mass, Central Mass, Western Mass, and um, you know we basically took what we felt were um, the best examples of each community's pieces and compared them to our existing um, application you know, for the ZBA. Um, as you notice, just to do a quick overview of the process, we, decide, we suggest creating three separate applications to avoid any confusion for anyone who comes in front of us. Um, an observation I made, um, you know, like, for example, Mr. Strong's application came in and there were some questions as to how mm -hmm. it was completed or any applicant who comes in to know what information they're providing, because sometimes they may provide the information that's relevant to one more than the other that's not required. Right. Um, and to create a further in-depth checklist for each application, because the one that we currently have leaves a lot out and I, um, our intent moving forward, um, Alex and I are going to email, you know, the town's uh, staff that's involved in the process to get their feedback as to what they see as the most common issues that they face when they're evaluating um, applicants coming forward. So, you know, taking that data and bringing those forth to make sure that we address those questions um, in the checklist. So that way, um, you know, we can suggest the applicant that they have X, Y, and Z all in place. Um, and I'll move down to the, to, towards the latter part, just, in, just to uh, maintain on topic with this, because um, we wanna make sure that the staff can meet with them ahead of time to flush out any details missing in the application or mm -hmm. if they have questions. Um, going back to number four, um, an in-depth list of suggestions for the plan of land with the proposed development, if it's applicable. Um, it's to make sure that, you know, the reaction to the six criteria that we evaluate as a ZBA um, in the bylaws that are presented and to have the application outlined um, with the property dimensions. So that way we can understand exactly where this relief is needed. Um, requested to make sure that it's really um, applicable to what project is being brought forth to the board. Excuse me, Jen. Yes. Can you hear Does me or no? I can. I was wondering if Alex or if anybody had it enough to share. Um, could you please elaborate on what you're saying? He wants you to the, share it on a computer so we can. Oh, I emailed it to Sue. Do you want me to email? Alex, can you shoot her an email with the doc? Sorry, I emailed to Sue, I forgot to CC you. Um, and then uh, number five, uh, we basically determine um, how, if and how the new bylaws that were voted in at the annual town meeting of 2021, you know, how they affect the application process for the ZBA. Most of the bylaws referenced, you know, site plan reviews and things like that, which were pertinent to the planning board, but obviously there's trickle down effect, um, you know, to the ZBA on some of these issues. So we want to make sure and evaluate the process. Um, I'm not sure, you know, when exactly they become law, even though they're voted in. I know there's a process after that takes place, um, you know, with the select board, et cetera. Yeah, I think it has to go to the Attorney General's office first. Yeah. Well, technically speaking, once they advertise the bylaw changes, they're, they're in effect until they were voted down or turned down by the Attorney General. All right. So basically, you're in no man's land on anything. If you don't file under that, the way that thing is written, mm -hmm. uh, you really can't do anything until the Attorney General acts. Yeah. So with that, with that comment, um, would it be pertinent? I mean, obviously, Adam is the chair. You'd make these determinations for no applications to come forward unless there uh, are. I, I mean, well, they could still file an application, but the point that I'm trying to make is they have to comply with the way the new bylaw, bylaw is. has been written okay. until the attorney general turns it down. Okay. Okay. Or accepts it. Right. Or accepts it. Right. But I, people who want to do anything have to comply with that until such time as determination is made. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the only exception would be if somebody had filed a perimeter plan prior, they may be in a zone freeze. Okay. Thank you. Um, Six, we recommend requiring a digital copy of all applications, plans, and materials to be submitted prior to 
or at the time the application is submitted to the town um, staff to the offices. Um, we recommended two exceptions and I took the date in item two of fiscal year 2013 out of another community's um, suggestion that they had being sometimes prior to fiscal year 2013, a lot of different um, items weren't done um, on they it wasn't required to have things digitally done or plans drawn up that way all the time and not everyone you know um, have, have acclimated to that so in item one you'll notice this is any application items not produced electronically like hand-drawn plans that are um, certified because i know that was an issue that was brought up at one of the other applications that we received plans for it wasn't signed by the um by the surveyor so to make sure that all of those are done correctly um, and one thing noted on the application, there's a specific person mentioned at the reporter in the legal department. Now that person may or may not be there at some future point. So I think we should just reference, um, and Alex, you know, Alex concurred that we just have a, you know, the legal notices section and list the phone number because as we know, turnover happens, um, at any position. Um, and to alleviate stress for town staff. Um, we had noted uh, a few communities created a specific time deadline for the application submissions. So we recommended two o'clock. I mean, obviously that can be flexible depending on you know what time staff leaves for the day, but um, to make sure that the staff can can look at it, that it's not um, you know that we receive it as a board as well with timely manners. So that way um, we alleviate the well i didn't get this prior to meetings yeah i think that i haven't seen that to be an issue with applications there are some issues with public comment and additional stuff that were outside of the yeah. applications but i think if that's a, a blanket policy on on everything i i don't know if that's well, you know it, it should be the 2 p.m unless the board votes to waive it right i, I mean i you know, but, think you know there's always the reasonableness standard you know yeah. You can't expect uh, any employee to be sitting at waiting for anything, you know, right up to the last minute when they have other but tasks, I, but you know. I think what happened in the past is people emailed it or what have you at 4 35 o'clock and want the board to take take it up that night. And yeah. That's not fair to the board member. Yeah. Yeah. This is something you thought could help alleviate that issue. And you, you know, you could um since the recommendation prior to is to require a digital copy of the application. So if the board were, to, or if someone in the office staff were to receive a paper copy, you know, um, in person, we, you know, make sure that they get the digital copy before that 2 p.m. deadline as well. And obviously this is, these are just suggestions. So the board mm -hmm. can obviously uh, review it and make suggestions. Um, so if you wanted to include a number eight about the public comment, you know, whether you're referring to emails, letters, et cetera, yeah, all you know, to kind of be at that 8 p.m. or 2 p.m. unless, you know, otherwise uh, the board voted on, then, you know, that would be applicable. Um, we also felt it was hard to find some of the various applications, especially for the ZBA on the website, even go like myself, I was strolling through a lot of places and I'm like, you know, I don't know where this is. And I've used site map and some of the other pieces on the particular town site. So we felt it would be great if it were conspicuous location, like under the zoning board um, category, such as like the planning board applications or under theirs. Um, it just would be easier for people to find. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jen. You're muted. Yeah, um, um, I'm going to mute you while I speak because it makes a lot of feedback for people that are online. It's still doing it. So um, I haven't seen this yet. So there's quite a bit of things that I would comment on. And so I just I know this is a preliminary review of it. And um, I would really like to um, be involved for the next step. Yeah, that's why um, Alex and I are gonna email like the town staff, including you and Sue and Casey um, and Bob as well, um, just to see what the issues are. And also recommend if you, you know, if any board member thinks of any other town member who should be, you know, staff should be involved in the process as well as um, the three, you know, the four people I mentioned 
um, please send it and Alex and I will reach out or you can, you know, send them, send us their info if they've given you any feedback. Um, item number 10 was a suggestion of increasing the application fee. Um, while some may see this as a negative, uh, you know, Alex and I looked at surrounding communities um, and we looked at it as a way to create revenue for the, for the town. Um, and, you know, that could go a long way at different points. I mean, you know, it depends on how many applications you get a year, if it's relevant or not. But um, currently the ZBA applications stand at around $100, stand at $100. Surrounding towns such as Greenfield, Sunderland have it at 150, um, and some are some other communities like I think it was Montague and Amherst have like a sliding fee structure based on the impact of the particular project, like square footage or something. Yeah, I mean it's just as you think about like you know we've had cases where people have wanted to add a downstairs downstairs bedroom. They're going one foot on their neighbor's property. The neighbors are all for it. They come and support. It just feels like well, they're already paying a five to seven thousand dollar tax bill, and then you're gonna whack them another hundred and fifty just to come in front of us. Yeah. I mean, and I get it. Everything you know, town hall staff, everybody there, you know, they all need to be. Everybody should be compensated, but I think a sliding fee or something is more appropriate than a. I think for years, it was twenty five bucks. Well, I know. I mean, pretty soon you're not gonna be able to get a gallon of milk, maybe for. Twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five. Forty-nine at Walmart. <laughs> no, I think it's all great information. I think you guys did a great job, and we should probably, you know, continue this stuff probably August and September to give. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I'm a big fan of fillable edible PDFs, you know, on the town hall uh, website, so they can, people can just submit online. You know. Well, my question is with the separate applications. Sometimes people don't quite understand whether or not they need a special exception. Or they need a variance, right? And you know, it's 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 much more practical if you could turn around and say, and or whatever is applicable to grant this relief, and you know, to encompass it so that you don't have to start from scratch again. But if you file for a variance and you really needed a special exception or or what have you, uh, you know, people have to go back at it again. And I would think it must be much more flexible if the attorneys would say that that's all right yeah i mean i don't i mean i know john was pretty adamant on him you know having legal involved i think alex and jen have done an excellent job well, and i think you know so yeah. but i think at the you know at the end of the day we would have to get a stamp of approval from, well, I, from casey you know what i think should happen is this is the draft right the town administrators you know casey and jennifer and bob if, if they have any comments to get them back to Jennifer and uh, Alex and see how they would blend in. Yeah. And then we could all talk about it afterwards. Yeah. And uh, then once we've gone through it and it's been a little bit, then we could send it to town council to ask them if we're making any fatal flaws. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that was the intent of what we were doing. Yeah. And the first item here, I um, apologize for not going into detail. One of the things that we saw two community, two cities in Western Mass did, um, and I think uh, one or two out in Eastern Mass did as well, um, you know, Boston, Westfield, and Springfield, was creating a rules of procedure. So applicants, if they be a lay person, not a you know legal expert, could go on the site and understand the entire process. We didn't pull examples of that because we figured this was just an outline to mm -hmm. give you an update of what we've been doing and we could pull those pieces so we could, you know, pick and choose whatever we would like to move forward on. Um, but we found that to be really informative for us to viewing the process and procedures. So while we may not be a, a, a city per se, you know, there's the process of you have to meet with this office and go to here and get this approval. And um, it also lists on the rules, like the, the typical duration, like you should hear from the board within this time if you file and just kind of outlining some of those rules and regulations so the layperson can understand. So that was the biggest, um, or that was item number one. I just kind of skimmed over that. Um, but that would also, help alleviate any confusion. Um, you know, the information we currently have on our application is kind of vague. 
you know, people may know to give it to the building inspector's office, but obviously with COVID, there was fluctuation of office times and things like that. So um, moving forward, if it's clear and concise, and you know, you even have in there built in the electronic versions to be emailed over, then that would also help alleviate that. Um, but to, to go back to what um, Bob said, you know, this is just us working and like, like I said at one of our last meetings um, was we just want to do the legwork so that we review it, um, the, the board reviews it, the staff who do this all the time review it, and then it goes up to town council for the final stamp of approval because while we're taking from communities, you know, there could be things that they may have seen in a lawsuit or just legal you know, legal things have changed where they want to give feedback and change that that particular piece up. No, I think it's great. And, um, you know, I think it's important to always realize that we won't, us won't always be here. And same with, you know, Jen and, and Sue. I mean, people move on and do different things. So, you know, if we look at a long-term goal where it's something that, you know, no, like, you know, someone else can pick up and say, this is easy to understand. You know, this is not, complicated or there's an instruction sheet that goes with it it's beneficial for for everybody involved yeah. well, i have one question on i have to find cheated on that. number 11 mm -hmm. we encourage a pre-application meeting with staff to flush out details in the application that's fine but they need to take concise notes as to what the questions were and what they do and what they what they told the party and it also should have a caveat in that that the staff isn't making the decision for the board because the decisions of the board are certain are are discretionary on the board's part most of the time. And but it's fine, but you need to have adequate records of what was discussed and how the questions were framed, mm -hmm. because you can frame a question to get the answer you want. And the party you asked the question to may not know the rest of the information. And uh, I just want to make sure yeah. we, we don't get ourselves into a trap. Uh, and I don't particularly like uh, where somebody goes in and drafts an order of conditions before the board is seen uh, and listen to the hearing. Okay. And, you know, I just want to avoid that happening. I don't mind meeting, with, having people meet with people, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I just want to make sure that everything's on the table and people understand what arguments were put forth, what they were told, and what have you, and that it's it's just advisory. It's not cast in stone. It's the board's decision in their discretion. I agree. I I also think that I don't. I mean, and I think it's it's apples and oranges too, Bob. You know, when you deal with something like a big project, you know, like this, you know, with with like let's say that um, marijuana cultivations coming up we so can't talk, we can't prejudge anything it's well i'm not prejudging it let's let's just say for example there's a thirty thousand square foot manufacturing facility yeah. i don't and there could be a reason why if there's a pre um or an application review meeting mm -hmm. let's just say that that the chairman of the planning board and the or chairperson i'm sorry the planning board and chairperson of the select board and the chairperson of the zoning board can sit in on that meeting, you know? No, no. No, Jen says no. So I guess you can't do it. I don't know. I'm just, no, that's my, I just, that's, that's my point. But there's the no, difference no, no, between no, no. that and that and someone putting an addition yeah, on their house. To get into the no, we're going to deal with this more in, in, in the next. No, I'm not going to debate whatever. Yeah. Can I make a comment? Uh, sure, Jen, Jen, and then Jen. Yeah. We're not taking public comment. So. Well, she's running the meeting. Yeah. As a as a staff member, I'm saying the pre-application meeting is actually to guide the person, the applicant, and whether or not they're going with a variance or a special permit to making sure that they've actually gone through the application and have all of the details that you as a board are going to need. We're not telling them whether they're going to get a permit or not get a permit. We're making sure that it's complete in order for the ZBA or 
you know, with this application that we're talking, actually has all of the tools they need to make a decision instead of having the applicant come before the board and then say, oh, you know what, your plans aren't, your plans are not stamped, or you don't have uh, enough information of the project, or like I had a pre-meeting on a second phase of a project that's going through town and you know, in that meeting, I saw that we needed more details in a particular area. So then they can go back to their architect and their engineer and they can get that information prior to going to the board. So that's the that's the purpose of a pre-application meeting. So what you're talking about, Bob, is something completely different. I understand what you're saying, but what number 11 is, it, it, and I almost think it doesn't need to be encouraged, that it actually needs to be required that they actually have a pre application meeting with town staff. All right. Go ahead. Um, so basically what Jen Gannett just said was where I was going with just basically having them evaluate it to make sure it's a complete application. So that way, um, for example, when we had Whitney Hill come in front of us, there were a lot of missing pieces and um, Ms. Whitney didn't seem to know what was missing because she didn't, she wasn't represented by council. It was just her. So in having, um, instead of using encourage, put requiring the pre-application is just for the town staff to look it over and say you're missing x y and z in order to have a complete application but it has nothing to do with them approving suggesting and i hear your concern bob about getting um a, a conditions written up by someone else's council um and that surprised me as well because it should be the board's decision to write up those decisions, not somebody else's attorney. Either, either, um, either that, they should have they should have provided supplemental information to the board prior to the start of the hearing or meeting as to what additional information they wanted to put forth, and uh, to find out during the course of, of the hearing that there were certain uh, things that were sent to council, et cetera, et cetera that hadn't been shared with the board members, okay? And, and that was a big, I was very upset about that. So I, I, if they meet and do these things, they need to take adequate records of what transpired in these meetings and how the questions were, what the questions were, and what the recommendations were, et cetera, and, and put them, reduce them to writing and, and make them available to the board. So when the board sees it, they can understand it better. I just don't want to get, trapped into a situation. So what I'm hearing you say is that you have concern that the town staff would would say something that would jeopardize I say the board. That. I didn't say that. I just want to make sure that the applicant understands that it's a recommendation from staff. It's not necessarily going to grant them a permit when, when it comes before the board. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and, and we need to see the, what, the, what was what was given to the to the applicant and what the general and what the opinion was both ways and so that everything is above board i wasn't prepared to debate this tonight i thought we were going to uh, well i think there will be further guys. further further debate i mean i, I don't know we, 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 we need to put, sure we need to put this on the yeah. agenda for august yeah, so do you want to we alex and i believe I mean, that this is going to be a couple start. of months it wasn't okay. going to be start. this yeah this but I just year. want to make yeah sure. I have no intent of on uh, taking a vote on this tonight yeah, yeah we didn't we didn't think we we didn't have anything um you know like we wanted to get the just or get the opinion of the board just to see if they liked the direction as to where we were moving and then from this process we would um create new documents for the three applications if that's something the board felt that it was pertinent to do and then you know create the actual documents for the board to vote to evaluate to make recommendations of changing worrying you know hearing what you're saying for your concerns to make sure that you have the opportunity to send an you know to an email to sue or if I believe you will not violate open meeting law if you were to send an email to myself individually with your person with your recommendations. I'd have to ask on that because now it's been presented. It's a public document. I think that two members can talk about not a quorum. Yeah, because we're not um, voting. It's so in my experience, like with the steering committee, for example, um, if we discuss something 
and there's a document shared to say, what is your opinion on like, for example, the parade description for the duties for the volunteers? Mm -hmm. What we all got the email as a client, you know, before the meeting, mm -hmm. then we just emailed Holly per se with our opinion of that. So we weren't emailing the entire board, it's individual. So you are just giving an individual opinion to one board member who's then taking your information and changing the document and then at the meeting or just prior to the meeting to evaluate here, then we're talking about it. So you're not violating open meeting law. It's the four items. Um, if you're debating, making a decision and- judgment. Right, but I would say that that would be considered debating but because it's not, a different thing of opinion. I'm not responding to Bob. Bob right. would just give me his feedback. Yeah. So I'm not responding. I'm just getting the information to, to make the changes to the document. Because otherwise, my suggestion would be to have a working meeting right. to, you know, to hammer out the specifics if, if that's where you would like to, you know, move forward. Either way is, is an option. I just, um, I know that when Alex made the suggestion of having a working meeting, it wasn't popular. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why as alternates who weren't, you know, we're not full board members, we were able to meet because there's just two of us and that wouldn't even violate with right. the other four. No, no, and I think it's great. Um, I, you know, I also think that anytime council's involved with a board, no matter what the board, the chairman of that board should be involved. Um, because um, I, that's just my opinion. And uh, then everybody's on the same page. So I think um, we're good on this until August. Um, and how about August? I was just thinking you might want to push it off to September because there are people taking vacations. I don't go out of well, town, but- well, I want to have a meeting. Uh, I think we have to have, we should have a meeting in August because I believe we have um, phase two tree houses meeting with planning and then wants to meet with us. Um, I'm not available the second week of August, which is kind of the first week of August, depending on how you do your weeks. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, I don't know what the status of that is. Uh, if they come in, I likely have to request the Board of Selectmen to allow me to participate. I assume that uh, the last application they filed, they said I would had property within 300 feet and it was over, over 400 feet, but uh, I still had to file with the Ethics Commission and the Board of Selectmen had to authorize me to participate. Well, I would think that that authorization is going to continue through the process because mm -hmm. it's, I don't believe it's a new application. That's yeah. true. It's not, that's correct, Ms. Ms. Gannett, Jen, that's, 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 that's un, correct. That's correct. You're all set, Bob. All right. I just want to make sure it's $15,000 fine. If I do it. Well, if you want to be safe, go ahead and do it. And then, I mean, it is actually a new application because you're getting a new abutters list. Yeah, you'd have to do that. I would do it to cover. Oh, all right. We'll see what happens. If I get, if I'm on the abutters list, I will do it. Oh, you'll see if they made you on the abutters list this year or not. This she time or not. Moved it off this time. Yeah, you will be on it. But but I I think that uh, it's a fifteen thousand dollar fine if you participate in something that they deem uh, you had a financial interest in. Right. So I, I guess you should you should you should file. Um, how does the first Thursday in August work for the folks that are here? What day, what's the day? August 5th or the 12th? August, uh, the 12th, I'm not available. It's the 5th. It's a number in my phone. I don't know anything right now. But that's, that's, that's not giving them much time to send out the, the notices and everything else. Applications are being reviewed at this time. Have they paid the fee and filed it with the town clerk? It actually, the application has come in and it's going through the process of review. Uh, Jen, do you think that it would be, do you think it's gonna be 
ready with all the postings by the 5th or do you think we should go to the 19th? I believe that it's going to be available for the 5th. Um, you did ask about the planning board. Do they have to go in front of the planning board before us? They the don't plan? have. Yeah. Yes, but I don't think they have. They can. They don't have to. The planning board doesn't have to make a decision before it goes for us. Correct. I would prefer that the they can go simultaneously. Board. Right, they can go simultaneously. It's um, on their current agenda. That's uh, for July twelfth. They have treehouse site plan review phase two scheduled public hearing um, August second question mark. So August 5th would be just following if they decided because they haven't even decided so yet according to the my, agenda online. My question is the application for zoning thing gets filed with the town clerk. Has it been filed with the town clerk and is the meter running? No. Okay, so there's no application file. They've sent there the is an application. There's a draft in for review is what you're telling me. The application hasn't been filed with the town clerk because the town clerk will get the application. The fee will get paid. The town clerk will stamp it in. I believe. I could be wrong. Right. And once it's filed with the town clerk and she stamps it in, that starts the clock. May I speak? Uh, yes, go ahead. So when we take the, the application in, we're doing a review. Bob is going to make his comments. He's going to have it. Then he'll have it. The, the fee is in. We have the money. We have to file it with the clerk. And I don't know if Sue has done it today, but it will. it's going to happen either tomorrow or, or it's happened today. But I don't believe that, that it's been signed off by the clerk. Clock starts once it's filed. Correct. So you anticipate the clock starting either tomorrow or at the latest Monday. That's what you're saying. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, I'd like to have a meeting for the first week, the first before the six before I go away. Mr. Sosky. No problem. You're available. Mr. Hirschenreiter. Let's do it. I'm available. You're available. Mr. Decker, you're up in the air. No, I'm, just, I'm pretty sure I'm available. I just want to make sure we do it right. I understand. And there's a certain number of days it has to. Well, if we then we'll know. Everything else. I'll, I will check in with Miss Hancock, and I will make sure that everything's good. And I'll check with Jen. And worst case scenario, we cancel the meeting. We give everybody advance notice, and we do it the following. We do it do it the sixteenth, or we find you know I'll have the administrative staff send out an email poll and see when people are available. Yeah, it's fine. I just want to make sure we do, do it. Right. Well, I, I understand. I have faith in our staff. I know people, but no matter how good you are, people make mistakes. So uh, can we do six o'clock again? Fine with me. That's all right. As long as I don't Six. fall asleep, I fall asleep this afternoon. Well, Mr. Dick, you need to stay hydrated. It keeps you awake better than uh, caffeine. Set an alarm on your phone for clock. There you go. Okay. Mr. Chair, I be recognized? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I received this field trip to the Charlton Treehouse location, and there was a list of select. So people. Chief, Kevin, I was listed, I assume, because I was chairman. I am no longer chairman, so this is going to be on. Uh, we, we have been invited to tour Charlton, Charlton Treehouse location, to get the feel of how Treehouse operates. Please let me know if you are available to attend July 20th at 1 o'clock. And so that's, since I'm no longer that position, I, I, I think it would probably be you if you're interested in knowing. All right. Well, I will um I'll take that I'll follow up with uh Jen in the town hall and see what that is on on that. If it's if I can make it work, I, I might have another commitment that day. 
So if I can't make it, I'll open it up to any other board member that would be interested in going, or maybe two can go if that's not a quorum, if someone else is interested. What day is that for? It's like a Tuesday, the 20th? 20th. Of July? Yeah. Yes. I think that's a Tuesday, is it correct? Am I correct? Yes, I believe so. It's Tuesday. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Yes. Um, may I ask one question? Um, so when we come to the August meeting, would you like Alex and I to have drawn up documents to evaluate, or would you like just sections of pieces that we thought, thought pertinent so you can X them out or approve before we go to the document stage? I would say that um, don't press yourself into, you know, doing a lot of work on this before the other meeting before the august meeting but if do as do as much i think this is great i think you're on the right track i think i think the most important part is to make sure that what we're doing is in sync with town hall staff current and then future so you know i think that that's you know and it's easy user friendly for the residents and applicants um you know i think i think that that's that would be great so if you know, you have time to run in and um, town hall staff has time to, to, to give you before the next meeting and there's ability to get that information pushed out or more information back in, then we can fully accommodate that. And then, you know, if we if we have a, I would see if we have people in front of us for an application, then we'll um, handle that as a first order of business um, in August. And if we don't, then we can probably have a meeting about this stuff and if time allows we can address this after um, I would hope that you know any applicant that has I know if it is treehouse coming back like we believe it is they provided us a pretty thick binder last time I hope that you know when things are filed and approved from the town clerk that there's stuff here that we can pick up or can get emailed out I just think it's important that board members have opportunity to review stuff at their own cadence so they can come up with you know, pointed questions or concerns prior to the meeting. I'm not one for like, here, look at this. Now we're going to do this side, like a, a little bit of advanced yep. knowledge. So if anybody does, no one has anything else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I just had one question. Yep. I think we ought to take the time to thank Bernie for his diligent service since Germany last year or so. Yeah, I would like to thank Bernie and his family. And, um, no, for I think he's, he's he's had an awful lot of under stress and, and what have you. And you know, sometimes people don't realize how stressful it is to to sit in that that catbird seat, and you get all the pressures and everything else. So I just want to mention the fact that I think he, he's done an excellent job, and uh, yeah, and haven't always agreed with him on different things, but. Uh, I think he's done the best job he, he could possibly do. Okay, so I want to thank him. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you, Bernie, for for serving and everybody. I mean, it's a it's a challenge, and um, you know, as we move forward, it's giving up time. And I know there's a lot of people and a lot of a lot of family members that miss out on things because people are serving on boards and committees. So. I was thankful my wife is not, I'm not a computer person. And my wife is really handling all that stuff on the computer. So well, maybe we should have changed it to, to Nancy. Yeah, <laughs> but that, that really, seriously, I, I'm not a computer person. People get mad at me because they don't respond when I, when I got out of teaching because I didn't like computers and I still don't like it. Right. So I mean, you're more confident than I am on it. I'm sure you do a great job. Oh. oh, it's nice to be back in person too. I mean, I think a year of Zoom and COVID and stuff has been a challenge and we're lucky that we've had such a, we haven't had, you know, a real, we had a good good response in town and people took it seriously and we're able to be back here. So that's a good thing. Thanks, Brian. It was nice working for a few months. Oh, uh, can I make a comment? Yeah, I yeah. Have to thank you for doing this. This is something that this has been something I've been trying to do, and people really did a good job on this. They did.
Do the best we can. That's all we can do. You know, that's it. Really, set no excuses. All right. Well, I make a motion that we adjourn. All right. Seconded. Okay. All, all those in favor, Ms. Remler. Aye. Mr. Decker. Aye. Yeah, Unanimous. 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 Unanimous.